Over recent days, there's been a lot of coverage of the links between the National Council for Civil Liberties and the Paedophile Information Exchange. PI, as it was known, campaigned for adult sexual relations with children to be made legal. It became affiliated in 1975 and remained so until 1983, a period when Harriet Harman, her husband Jack Dromey, and the former Cabinet Minister Patricia Hewitt, all of whom went on to be prominent figures in the Labour Party, were active in the NCCL. Now this programme can reveal that Brian Gould, a Labour MP at the time and later in the shadow cabinet, declined an invitation from Pai to become an honorary vice president, but said he had a good deal of sympathy for its objectives. From 1977 to 1982, the paedophile group published a magazine called Magpie. Seventeen issues were produced, now stored in the British Library. Yesterday, our reporter visited to read them. They're restricted items, and they were read under the supervision of a curator. The first issue, dated March 1977, is about half a dozen typewritten pages. This is from page one. Magpie aims to provide paedophiles with their own journal and to further the understanding and acceptance of the love for children in today's society. Magpie does not promote or otherwise encourage unlawful acts, sexual or otherwise. On page four, under the headline, Ideas, Please, it says... You may remember that at the last AGM it was decided that we should invite one or more prominent people to become honorary vice president of Pi. A number of names have been put forward, and some of these have been written to, although as yet no one has yet taken us up on our offer. One of the people written to was Brian Gould, MP, chosen largely because of the speech he gave to the Campaign for Homosexual Equality Conference in Southampton last year. Although he declined to accept, his reply is worth reporting. It reads, Thank you for your letter and for your invitation to become an honorary vice president. I'm afraid that I have so much on my plate at the moment that it would be unwise of me to take on any further responsibilities for the time being. I should be less than honest with you, however, if I were to give you the impression that lack of time is my only difficulty. As you say, yours is an unpopular cause, and whilst I have a good deal of sympathy for your objectives, I do not think it would be fair to my wife and family for me to take a public stand on it. They suffered somewhat as a result of my speech to the Campaign for Homosexual Equality, and while I am robust enough to take the comments, correspondence, etc., my wife in particular reacts badly to it. I am sorry to have to send you such a disappointing reply. The article went on. Now, if an MP who depends on votes and public goodwill can give such a considerate reception, there must be someone somewhere who would be prepared to help us in this way. Any ideas, please? Brian Gould stood unsuccessfully for the leadership of the Labour Party in 1992. He left politics two years later, returning to his native New Zealand, where he was Vice-Chancellor of the University of Waikato until 2004. When we contacted him today about this, he said he wasn't willing to be interviewed and that he didn't remember the correspondence. Mr Gould has asked us to make clear that he has never had the slightest sympathy for paedophiles or any involvement with the Paedophile Information Exchange. He added... Whereas today I would have rejected any contact with them at all, in the climate of the opinion of those days, with so little known about paedophilia, I gave them a polite reply. In issue 11 of the magazine, dated May 1978, under the headline NCCL Supports Pies Rights, the magazine notes... At the recent annual general meeting of the National Council on Civil Liberties, a motion was passed which is of particular importance to Pi. Accordingly, we reprint this motion, number 39, in full. This AGM reaffirms the right of free discussion and freedom to hold meetings for all organisations and individuals doing so within the law. Accordingly, whilst reaffirming the NCCL policy on the age of consent and the rights of children, particularly the need to protect those of pre-pubertal age, this AGM condemns the physical and other attacks on those who have discussed or attempted to discuss paedophilia and reaffirms the NCCL's condemnation of harassment and unlawful attacks on such persons. PI is affiliated to NCCL and we have long advocated that our members should join as individuals so they may participate in and benefit from the activities of this large and long-established organisation. At that time, Harriet Harman was the legal officer of the NCCL. Her husband, Jack Dromey, sat on the council's executive committee and Patricia Hewitt was its general secretary. The following year, in issue 13 of the magazine, the NCCL published an advert. 
In the bottom left-hand corner of page 14, which also contained two photographs of clothed young boys, one of whom is in shorts with his legs apart, the advert is printed. It's approximately four to five inches high and one column in width. It reads, Join the NCCL. The National Council for Civil Liberties is the largest independent organisation working to protect and extend human rights in the United Kingdom. NCCL's finances come solely from voluntary subscriptions and donations. If you value liberty, join the NCCL and support its work. The remainder of the notice includes details of how to subscribe, including rates. £5 per year for individuals, £6.50 for couples. Ian Pace, a musician and lecturer at City University in London who's campaigned against abuse in music education, has looked through all of the editions of the magazine Magpie. I'm left with the impression of a magazine that is really quite incredibly blatant, especially in the later issues, about the nature of the people writing for it, the type of potential audience. I read articles quite openly talking about people having relationships with uh, underage, even prepubescent uh, children. I read a, a sort of paedophile crossword that uh, was it was regularly in the journal. Um, reviews of films and books where they were trying to sort of locate any elements like this. And it's an extremely sinister thing to read. And I would say anyone who'd even glanced at this would have been left in no doubt as to what type of organisation this was. And I would have thought would not have wanted to go anywhere near them. One of the issues uh, does include an advert for people to join the National Council for Civil Liberties, so an advert the NCCL itself placed in the magazine. I wonder what you think about what, uh, the relationship between the two. We've heard that uh, Pi was affiliated to the NCCL, but also that it was one of lots of organisations that had that kind of relationship. Well, I've, I've, I've seen the documents from Pi's side. I haven't looked at uh, the NCCL's own archival documents, but I've read the reports on those. Um, it certainly looks like the relationship was quite a bit closer than has been made out by some people. That's where there are questions that very much need to be asked of pretty much anyone involved with NCCL at the time. Uh, what did they really know about Pi? What did they know about Magpi, their publication? Um, did they ever read any of this material? And if they didn't, what were they doing taking an ad out in the magazine? If you look at issue 13 of Magpi, which is from April 1979, First of all, they put the symbol of the International Year of the Child, which it was in 1979, on the second page. And they, they talk about uh, all sorts of uh, activities for children and how Pi members uh, might get involved with this. Uh, and there's even a review of the Brownie Annual where the reviewer actually talks about how paedophiles might want to sort of... Uh, buy a copy of this because of the photographs of young prepubescent girls and that's on page six of that journal and then you find the ad for nccl just a few pages later and it's next to some pictures some very clearly sexualized pictures of boys in there um, there's no way anyone could look at this journal and think there was anything innocent about it i'm sorry i cannot believe that Ian Pace. We tried to speak to Patricia Hewitt, Jack Dromey and Harriet Harman. Her spokesperson told us Harriet Harman had nothing to do with Pi and did nothing to promote them during her time at the NCCL. She's got nothing to apologise for. Jack fought against Pi and heavily defeated them at the AGM in 1976. They were very much marginalised in NCCL after that. The fact that they needed to ask for protection against physical threats at the 1978 AGM demonstrates that.